Welcome to this training lesson on starting up the Hornet. In some missions, you will find yourself in a cold and dark Hornet that you will need to bring to life. While this can be a rather long process as described in the manual, you can also enable the auto start function. However, for this lesson, we'll review the full startup procedure. Press spacebar when you are ready to get started. The first thing we need to do is enable the two batteries. This will allow operation of the canopy and power the engine igniters. You'll also notice that the integrated fuel and engine indicator, or IFE, in the lower left portion of the instrument panel will have power. Move the battery switch to the up or on position with a right mouse button click. The Hornet has two fire detection circuits, A and B, that test for fire in the engines, auxiliary power unit, and bleed air system. Before we go into detail on that though, Check that the hydraulic brake pressure gauge for the wheel brakes shows at least 3000 PSI. Confirm this by looking at the gauge, which is located to the left and up from the highlighted fire test switch. OK, now put the spring loaded fire test switch in the up test A position and keep holding it up to test the A circuits. To do this, place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the right mouse button. Keep holding the mouse button down and do not release it until it runs through all the fire test audio warnings. In addition to the audio warnings, also note the fire test warning lights on the upper left and right portions of the instrument panel. When it's done, press spacebar. We will now do the same thing for the B circuit. After waiting 10 seconds, Place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the left mouse button to move the switch in the down test B position. Keep holding it down and then release it once all the fire warning audio messages have been played. Well done. Press spacebar. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. APU fire. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Good job. Note that in the top left portion of the IFE, you can see the RPM and temp of both the left and right engines. These will be important for when we start the engines. We will now turn on the auxiliary power unit, or APU. This is a small, self-contained engine that augments the bleed air system and will start turning the engines for engine starts. Place the APU control switch in the up or on position with the left mouse button click. Once the green light next to the APU switch comes on, move the engine crank switch to its right position, marked by the R with the right mouse button click. This will allow the APU to power the air turbine starter, or ATS which in turn allows the aircraft mounted accessory drive, or AMAN, to start turning the fan blades within the right engine. Once the right engine RPM has reached 20%, as indicated on the IP, move the right throttle from off to idle by pressing right shift only. This in turn will introduce fuel into the engine combustion chamber and start the igniters. Once the right engine RPM has reached 60%, the right engine start cycle is complete, and the right generator is automatically engaged. Once at 60%, press spacebar. When we conducted the tests of the A and B fire test circuits, we also closed the bleed air shutoff valves. We need to reopen these by rotating the bleed air knob clockwise 360 degrees from norm to norm. Do this by right mouse button clicking on the outer portion of the knob. When done, press spacebar. With the right engine running and generator power on, place the left and right digital display indicators, or DDIs, to the day position using right mouse button clicks on both brightness selector knobs. Next, rotate the HUD Symbology brightness control knob clockwise by placing your mouse over it and rotating your mouse wheel forward. Once you see video displayed on the left and right DVIs and HUD, press spacebar. In the lower center of the instrument panel, 
is the Multipurpose Color Display, or MPCD. Rotate the power and brightness control knob to the full bright setting by placing your mouse over the knob and rotating your mouse wheel forward. It will take a few moments to power on. Press spacebar once you see video displayed on the MPCD. On the left DDI, press the menu push button to bring up the support page. The support page has several sub-pages like the checklist, engine, fuel, ADI, and HSI. For now though, press the FCS push button to select the flight control system page. The FCS page shows the status of the control surfaces and any detected FCS errors. The X's indicate detected errors, but we will address those once the left engine is started. You should not see any two R or FADEC caution messages along the bottom of the left DDI. Note that by default, you will not have the built-in test or bit page on the right DDI. We'll come back to this. During this lesson and future lessons, you will often see and hear the master caution. This is the large yellow label button on the instrument panel that will light when any caution condition is triggered. There will also be an accompanying deedle deedle sound to draw your attention. Press this button or click on it to acknowledge the caution and extinguish the light. Press the master caution again to restack the caution and advisor notices along the bottom of the left and behind. Cautions will be along the top and advisories in smaller text along the bottom. If the left DDI is not on, then the caution and advisories will be displayed on another display. By default though, they will be on the left DDI. The Hornet comes equipped with an inertial navigation system, or INS. Use right mouse clicks to set the INS switch, located on the sensor panel to the ground position. This will start an INS ground alignment. Now it is time to crank the left engine. Go ahead and move the engine crank switch to its left position, labeled L, by left mouse clicking it. Once the left engine is at 20% RPM, as indicated on the IFE, move the left throttle from off to idle by pressing right alt home. This will add fuel to the engine and start the igniters. When the left engine is at 60% RPM, press spacebar to continue. quite a few exits indicating abnormal FCS readings. To clear these, press and hold the FCS reset button. To the left of the INS switch is the radar switch. Set this switch to the operate position using your right mouse button. Don't worry, the radar will be in silent mode. You won't microwave the ground. Our next step will be to run a bit on the flight control system, or FCS. Before doing so, set the flaps to the up, auto position with the F key, or two right mouse button clicks on the flap switch. We'll now run a bit of the flight control system. This moves the control surfaces to the lens to test for any software or mechanical errors. First, select the FCS bit page from the bit page on the right DDI. To run the FCS bit, we'll need to activate two controls at the same time. While holding up on the FCS bit switch on the right wall, press the FCS push button on the right DDI. Upon doing so, you'll see the controls being cycled on both the FCS DDI page and if you look outside the cockpit, you can watch the wing and tail control surfaces moving.
Once the FCS bit is complete, marked by the beep tone, place the flap switch in the center or half position with the left mouse button clicked on the switch. Takeoff is done with flaps set to half. Once we are airborne, we'll move them to auto. For takeoff, we will want our stabs trimmed for 12 degrees. To set this, press and hold down the takeoff trim button. Upon doing so, you will also notice that the stab values on the FCS page will change to 12. The leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps, and rudder should all have values of 30 degrees. You should also have no X's on the FCS page. Uncage the backup ADI by placing your mouse over the SAI cage knob and rotating the mouse wheel aft until the red flag is stowed. Close the canopy by holding the canopy control switch in the down and closed position until the canopy is closed. Do this by pressing the key combination or placing the mouse over the switch and holding down the left mouse button. Once the canopy is closed, press spacebar to continue. At this point, the INS has been aligned as indicated on the MPCD HSI page. Move the INS switch from ground to nav with one right mouse button click on the switch. Prior to taxi, press the menu push button on the left DDI to go to the TAC or tactical page. On the TAC page, you have access to subpages like the stores management system, attack radar, HUD, and electronic warfare pages. On the left DDI TAC page, select the HUD push button to display a mirror of the HUD on the DDI. This can be useful when head down or in case of HUD failure. Let's now set up the right DDI. Press the menu push button on the right DDI to bring up the tactical page. Press the menu push button again to bring up the support page. Now on the support page, press the FCS push button. We will want the HUD on the left DDI and the FCS page on the right DDI when we taxi and take off. The parking brake system is operated with the yellow and black parking brake handle. The handle is currently in the park position, indicated by the fact that the park label is visible to the pilot. Release the parking brake now by rotating the handle 45 degrees counterclockwise from the extended position. This can be achieved by left mouse button clicking the handle or pressing the right alt P key. This will release the lock and allow the handle to return to the horizontal stowed position where the Emerge label is visible to the pilot. This concludes the current lesson on starting up the Hornet. As mentioned earlier though, there is also an option for automatically starting up the Hornet by pressing the left Windows Home key. You can end the lesson now by pressing the Escape key.